Hello and welcome back to the United Federation of Doll Clubs uh, YouTube channel, Adventures in Dolls. My name's Karen Allen. Today, our program is called the 10 Inch Club and it's presented by Region 6 member Dale Bocci. Uh, before we get to the program, if you have a program you would like to present or maybe something you would like to see, a topic you would like covered, um, you can write us. Just put it in our comment section. We'd be glad to hear from you. Also, um, we'd like to thank those of you who continually support our programs. We appreciate it. And now... Let's get to the video. 10 inches is really an odd size for a doll. Too big for doll houses and too small for cabinets. 16 inch dolls are approximately one third the size of a child. So they are easier to sew for. Large dolls fit in rockers and can sit in chairs for tea. Alas, 10 inch dolls can't sit for tea or hide in your pocket. It's a good thing doll makers didn't overanalyze size like I just did. And they blessed us with these beauties. Behold my 10 inch doll. Nineteen-fifties was a time of change, especially in the doll world. Composition gave way to vinyl and hard plastic. Little girls' dolls gave way to teen fashions. These are all pre-Barbie, leading up to Barbie in 1959. Little Miss Revlon by Ideal was a favorite. Another favorite of the later 50s is Jill and her friend Jan. I've got to tell you a little bit. Go back that way. These are all of the clothes she had, but I want to tell you about the box in the back. If I can show you the box in the back. The box in the back came from the original owner. She carried it in her ranch ware box from one of the from one of the retail uh, ranch stores in Montana. And here is another doll. And she is Jan. And Jan is Vogue's answer to Little Miss Revlon. Now Jan is kind of an enigma. Be because um, uh, Jill was considered Ginny's older sister, but Jan is just kind of there. So I don't know if Jan was supposed to be Jill's friend or not, but um, it says, hi, I'm Jan. I've got the Vogue doll family pamphlet. I'm a teenager too, and after seeing the beautiful wardrobe of high fashion outfits on the following pages, you will understand why Jill and I are called the fashion leaders in teenage doll society. Come, let's call Jill and look at our exciting new collection together. You'll see everything from fabulous formals to the most resplendent stay at home clothes. This doll, is so wonderful because I received a phone call when I had my Legacy Doll Museum. And this woman had um, her and her sister, they were, I don't think they, they were twins, I think they were just sisters, had a mother that bought them the most wonderful 1950 dolls that you have ever seen. And this mother took such prestige care of them. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, one doll I sold and this one I kept and, and she came with 
an absolute plethora of clothes. What's so amazing though, is the mom, uh, everything she bought for one doll, she bought for the other doll. And they have a whole room full of wonderful 1950s dolls, Patty Play Pal. And there would be one in a beautiful dress of pink and one in a beautiful dress of blue. It's such a thrill to uh, see uh, provenance. But it's so amazing because the mother took such fabulous care of these dolls and the sisters were not interested in them at all. So when the mother died, the dolls were gone. So here are some of her goodies. I just love the two black ones. I mean, the gold one and the little white one behind it. They must have been like cocktail dresses. And then if you look over here with the uh, polka dot one, she has a, a black velvet top and that must have been for cocktail parties as well. So women knew how to dress in the 50s. <laughs> so here are some more. Uh, the little nighty in the light blue. And again, some, uh, some plainer day dresses. And for every doll, there were matching clothes. So for the doll, the Jan I sold, everything that this doll had, Jan, the other Jan had as well. And I love the one in the middle with the, all the wonderful little lace. And it just shows you just uh, the diversity of clothes that they had. It's unbelievable. Now, I, uh, I know there are purists out there who are going to tell me that the last two dolls I, uh, that I showed you are 10 and a half inches and not 10 inches. And I'm here to tell you, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> but I have accepted them into the club. However, they don't have voting rights because they're just a little large. So all the rest of the dolls that I'm going to show you are 10 inches. And they have voting rights. This Sweet little Kessner, 1910 was the beginning of a new age for women. They still had constraints, but much less than their mothers. Many young ladies were working in retail or as office clerks. Clothing was less confining, although they still had uh, corsets at that time. Um, during this time, Charles. Dana Gibson idealized the woman as the Gibson girl. Kessner put her in doll form. Now he made two sizes of dolls. One is the size 10 inch and one is a larger one and she's 20 inches. And I do not think he made any other sizes. I think that was it. I think these two were the only sizes that he made. Here is the lovely clothes she has for all occasions. She um, she's, has mohair. She has a very, um, I think this is why Kessner Gibson girls are not as desirable as uh, French fashions or or other types is because their doll, uh, their bodies are kind of, they just kind of lay there. <laughs> they don't, they can't pose. You can't uh, put their um, arms up. They just kind of lay there. But she is a sweetheart. She has a mohair wig and she's obviously the green dress is a ball gown. And then the purple dress is a day dress. And then the black one, of course, you know, there's always mourning, someone to mourn in 1910. And over here, 
you have another day dress, the, the one with the blue trim, and over here with the flowered ones. So I think all together, I can't remember, maybe it's on here. Nope, it isn't. I think she's got seven or eight dresses. And these are a couple, these are three of her hats. The pink one that she's wearing and these two that go with her outfits. Now, the next 10 incher is a Bawa fashion, 1860s. It has taken me forever to say bow wow because it sounds like bow wow and uh, and I keep going isn't it barrel or <laughs> no it's bow wow and um, he was it's his name was Eugene bow wow and he was in business from 1842 to 1874 he was one of the earliest makers of porcelain and china heads and his dolls are usually, except she's probably marked under her kid body, but she, it's usually marked EB. And this is probably the most important thing to show how prolific he was. He sold heads to 126 doll firms, including Brew. Now, um, I've got another brew down the road. Uh, I just look at him and go, I just find it hard to believe. But I think the brews, uh, the, the heads that he made for brews are probably the French fashion dolls and not the brew bebés that we're so used to looking at. She is painted eyes with a mohair braid and straw hat. She has a kid body, pink cotton dress, underwear, and look at those shoes. I just, I cannot believe these dolls have shoes because they are so tiny and so easily, uh, you know, lost. I am absolutely amazed that they have shoes. But you can see she has mitten hands. They're uh, not individually stitched. She is uh, as wonderful and as much as I love her, she is not the highest quality of the Bawas. And her purse is not old, but it's just, it fits her beautifully. Now this one, There's some more pictures of my little Bawa, 10 inches. Now the next one is called a pressed head. It's a French China from about 1840s. And she is on a kid body and her head is pressed and not poured. Now, for any of you who wants to know the difference between a pressed head, whether it's china or bisque, and a poured head, poured heads are later. And your jambos have poured heads, but the early brews and the early chinas had pressed bisque. And what they did is they took these and the slip was not as uh, porous. So you had to press it into the mold before you put it in the kiln. So that is why you can tell a pressed head from a poor head, poured head, because look at the indentations on this little china. She is only 10 inches, and yet she has all these indentations here from someone pressing her bisque into uh, into the mold and do we know her oh no <laughs> we don't know who she is uh we do know she's french because of her body she has as she has a uh, uh her body is just french um 
French, the leather on it is entirely different. It's not a linen and, um, uh, and her hair. Those are the two biggest things. But her dress is made of a nice checked cotton and a fine white blouse with a little uh, cover. What do they call those? Fichus, uh, F-I-C-H-U's. And, um, and then she has the tiniest uh, white cap underneath her straw bonnet. I, I, you know, I wish I could show you that cap because it is so tiny. And here's some more underneath. You can tell she has, and this is very smart and I would recommend everyone doing this. And that is putting little pins. If you've got a kid body doll, put little pins in their shoes and that's way they keep them on and they won't fall off. But there she is in her entirety. There is her wonderful, she has split drawers. And, um, and I'm sure she's all original. I'm sure she's all original. And I don't believe anything much is all original anymore. Someone just put her in a drawer and, you know, left her alone for 150 or 180 years. So I'm really grateful for her. She's such a sweetie. This, oh, everyone loves a Gautier. And this is a Francois Gautier. He was in business from 1860 to 1899. He began his doll company in the outskirts of Paris. And he made fashion dolls, bebés, and all bisques. He has, he supplied doll heads to 54 other doll makers. Now this little beauty, oh, I love her hair. I didn't appreciate it. That's why I love doing these show, uh, these programs because it makes me take these dolls out and, and examine them. And, um, and I, when I took her hat off and I looked at her hair, I just went, I can't believe how sweet she is. And she just is kind of ignored in my cabinet. So I'm glad I got to appreciate her again. She is a later FG. She has what's called the scroll FG mark. I tried to take a picture of it. It's almost impossible. It's very, very faded but there is the block FG, which is earlier, and it's supposed to be considered a better mark. And that you have the scroll FG mark. She has, if you can see this, she has a bisque head, pretty blue eyes, paperweight, and a composition body with straight wrists. She is, in velvet, she looks like she just came out of a Rembrandt painting. She has uh, pretty dark, dark blue velvet and satin with a really, really cute straw hat. So, and auburn hair that has, you know, you just don't find them with that. You see mostly brunettes and blondes. So again, Look at the little shoes, if you can. And the little red, the red stockings. I guess I have to do that before I can do that. This little baby is Jules Nichols Steiner. There is another Steiner that is German, but this is the French Steiner. He was in business from 1855 to 1908, and he started out as a clockmaker prior to making dolls. This little lovely girl is a Steiner A. She was made probably in the late 1880s. She's a little bit higher painted 
she, you know, some have really pale uh, bisque and she doesn't, she has, uh, you know, a higher colored bisque. She has straight wrists though, a composition body mohair wig. And she is wearing an oh, uh, ecru lace and um, lace dress and bonnet. And this is, and she has her leather boots. The most important thing is I collect doll clothes. Every, every place I can find them, I collect doll clothes because it's so difficult. I can find hooray dresses quicker than I can find 10 inch doll dresses. It is extremely difficult. Um, and I don't know why you would think that this would be the easy doll to stick in a drawer somewhere and forget about. But for some reason, um, they are really, really hard to find. I bought this uh, doll about about 17 or 18 years ago. And she does come with a trunk. I didn't take a picture of the trunk, but it's just a standard trunk with paper, paper on the outside. She has, um, she has her own sweet little uh, parasol, a wonderful um, uh, cotton and lace dress. Oh, um, the one right in front of her is a light green with lace and satin. Uh, and then her coat. That coat is so nice. It's so unusual. And these all fit her. Uh, again, they, uh, she came with all of this. I'll give you a little close up of her the wonderful um, coat that she has. And I gotta tell you, I don't know, it's, it's rough. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, it's like mohair or, you know, I'm sure that they said it's fur, but what kind, I don't know. Here are uh, a few of her hats. She has a wonderful little bonnet that she has on. And then she has her little straw hat with the pink flower and her other hat that goes with her light green dress. She has uh, over here, she has a uh, shawl and back behind is she has another little play dress. And here are all of her goodies. So again, you get an opportunity to uh, uh, purchase dresses to fit 10 inch dolls. Call me, <laughs> I will buy them from you. So now, This one is truly the enigma because I don't have a clue who she is or what she is. About um, four or five years, well, about 15 years ago, I came across one of these. It's a little smaller. And um, the lady was doing a demonstration using her and another doll about the difference between French dolls and German dolls. And she says, these are the reasons that this all bisque is a French doll. And the first thing is the cork pate. The pate is, you know, German dolls use cardboard, but French used um, cork. And this little doll has an amazing um, set wig of mohair. 
I'll show you the back. The thing is, I doubt if the set has ever been messed with at all. This doll has just not been messed with. Now, when I bought her, and this doesn't matter, she was attributed to brew. They said, I, you know, that the woman that they had gotten them from um, um, said that it was attributed to brew. I don't believe that. She does, you know, but when you get these rare dolls, who knows? I said she may even be an FG, and the woman said, no, she's not an FG. But, you know, your guess literally is as good as mine. I just don't know. I've seen two of these in my lifetime. I've seen one. I've seen it once in a book, that wonderful pink book on all this dolls. I can't remember her name. And she said, and she said, this is a French all this doll, and that's all she said. So there's no maker mark. There is a an eight on the back of her of her head, and other than that, there is just she just doesn't uh, have any markings. She is, I know she's rare, but she's also an enigma. Here is a close up of her sweet face. And her little blue, blue eyes. I don't know if I've got any more on her or not. Yeah. Uh, again, shoes. She has shoes. I don't think they're particularly old, but uh, they fit her well. So, and, and the little ribbon on her cute outfit. Now, I don't know if I can show you. I don't know if they've got the back of her head. No, 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 no. Have I done the back of her head? No, because the back of her head is still, I'm sure has the same uh, um, uh, set as, as when she came out of the factory. I wish I would have a better picture for you. But she has her little Mary Janes on. And I talked to the dealer I bought her from about two days ago. And, and we were discussing her. And she said that, uh, uh, yeah, that she has only seen two in her life. And I've only seen two in my life. And they both came from um, France. So they, she purchased them from, in fact, she purchased the two dolls from a woman in France, the same woman. And both dolls came to collectors in uh, Montana. <laughs> so, so if you see one or find out any, let me know. This oh. is my final little baby. She is a brew brevite. And um, I've always wanted uh, a, a size zero. There's a wonderful book. It's called um, In the Palm of Your Hand. And it is all dolls under like, 10 or 11 inches. And when I saw my first brew as a 10 inch, I thought one of these days, it's just a very, very hard um, doll to find. Now there's one that is uh, the one with the chevron body. And I saw, I have seen one of those. And she's 10 inches. She's a size zero. She comes with a chevro body, which makes her a little later than this brevete. And she sold for $32,000. So they're really hard to come by. This doll, I did not pay $32,000 for her. But I'm thrilled to have her because I'm never going to have uh, um, a chevro body um, brew. 
But just to give you a little background on her, Leon Casimir Brew was initially a doll assembler. And then he decided he was going to open his own doll factory, at, which he did in 1866. And he started first with the wonderful um, brew fashions that we see today. And then in 1876, he made uh, the first bebe. And this is the first bebe. It's called a brevete. It is the first of the brews. After the, babe, uh, the brevete comes the circle dot and circle dots are the ones uh, with the extreme look on their face and their mouths are, are, look more open. And then the brujun that I was just talking about. But the thing that amazed me, and I don't know why, uh, Le um, Leon Brew made, he sculpted all of those molds. He sculpted the circle dot, the brujun, and the brevete. And he used those throughout the entire time he um, had his factory until he sold it to, um, oh, come on. Oh, everybody knows who he sold it to. I just said the body, the body type. Um, he sold it in 18, 1883 and they, oh, Brujun, the Chevrolet body. He sold it to Henry Chevrolet in 1883. And Henry made all the changes to the body, the Chevrolet body that we all know and love, but the, uh, he kept all the moles and the heads are all, they all come from Leon Brew. So this little cutie, again, was one of the, it was the second defined doll that Leon made. And there she is with some of her dresses. I have to tell you about the dress next to her. I found that on a website and I had to literally fight for it because another woman, it was, uh, it was on two separate websites and another woman uh, found it and wanted it. And then I found it and wanted it, or we both found it together. So we had to fight over it. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> It was a battle and I won, thank God. But it just shows you how difficult it is to find these small dresses. And if you can look over here, this also is a sweet, sweet dress um, that uh, can fit a 10 inch brew and so are the hats. So again, any time you find dresses, I'm beginning to think they're rarer than any doll. And I would like to do a little trousseau for her, but I don't know. And over here, this is the back of her with her little hat. And again, this is a box. Um, it's a darling box. I, I don't know if it's an embellished box or if it's original. Um, it's a sweet box. It did not come with my brew. My brew basically came with a really sad looking dress on her, <laughs> and, but she came with her brew shoes. So she has uh, brew shoes. In fact, I think all my 10 inch dolls have, uh, have brew shoes. There's her little mark. There's her little shoes. I can't believe how tiny they are. And they're marked shoes. And there's her little wig and her wig is a real sad thing. But 
um, it's her original one and I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking I shouldn't get her, maybe get her one, um, uh, you know, but uh, you always have to keep the original. So, so those are brew shoes and brew socks and she's a brew. And that is it. These are some of the babies. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, we like to send a special thank you to uh, Region 6 member Dale Bocci. Uh, she presented and created uh, the program. If you are not already a member of UFDC, uh, we'd like to have you as a member. So if you would click the link at the bottom of the page, it'll take you directly to our website where you will find membership. And when you do, tell them that Karen sent you. <laughs>